several counties in the eastern region, Machakos, Makuini, Siolo, Masabit, Itui, counties in the coast, and uh, most counties in northern eastern, Mandera, Karisa, Wajir, these ones are likely to receive no more to below no more rain, for that means depressed. The sun-baked earth is evidence of a serious lack of rain over a long period of time. In Samburu County, women have to dig into the ground on dry riverbeds with their bare hands to access water. And in Yamo Valley in Samburu County, the proximity to River Yamo presents a new challenge to the farmers that of having to deal with human wildlife conflict. Wild animals have been jumping over fences to feed on crops grown in the river valley. The main reason advanced is that wildlife habitats have not been spared the vagaries of weather and they now have to compete for food with human beings and livestock. The Kenya Red Cross Society has already issued a warning that over 2.1 million people in the worst affected counties of Mandera, Turukana, Wajir, Baringo, Marsabit and Samburu counties face starvation. We've handed over the 5,000 bags and from Monday uh, this food will start moving to the communities um, who are affected by the we've handed over the... The bread basket areas on the other hand are suffering from rainfall shortage. The seasons too are much shorter. Experts are pointing to agricultural biotechnology as the panacea to changing fortunes for farmers. Among the steps made towards achieving food security include the development of the water-efficient maize variety WEMA and the drought-tolerant maize variety DTMA, both of which can help farmers surmount the challenge of drought and rain shortage. The next wave of really significant contribution to economic growth, particularly in agriculture, is going to come from advances in genomics, and that's why I think that technology has significant role to play, and it's starting to show its contributions in a number of countries. We're, st we're starting to see small-scale farmers, low-resource farmers, becoming the beneficiaries of advances in agricultural biotechnology. And this is simply because if you add value, small increments in, a, in the value of resources. But Following the ban on imports of genetically modified foods, researchers have raised concern that their work is now in limbo. Put public funds in GM research because it is for the benefit of the country and ignore all sorts of myths that are aimed at derailing biotech development because one, we need this technology to develop for agriculture and food security, for our health, because that's now where the, the health research, diagnostics, therapeutics, that's where we're headed. So if we ruin our biotech development, then we'll keep spending money and remaining career students. Year in, year out, we have notebooks going for re, uh, study tour in the US. Next year, notebooks going for study tours in Burkina Faso. The question that stands out is, should researchers sit back while the vagaries of weather ravage humanity when technologies that are in use in developed countries hold the solution to the climate change challenge? For EcoWatch, I'm Judith Akolo.